Okay. Okay. Hi, Kelly. We are live. How are you? Hi, Linda. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> oh, great. Thanks. So this meeting, this conversation is actually pre-recorded um, because between time zones and work schedules, this was the easiest way for Kelly and I to get together. But I really wanted to talk with Kelly and share her insight and knowledge with you because I've been doing a series over the last several weeks around stress, particularly in the area of work. And not only is Kelly a working mom of three, she works and runs a business, but she also works in the area of finance and finance, financial health, getting out of debt is a huge source of stress for people. And so I'm gonna let Kelly introduce herself and her very particular lens that she works with people so powerfully in their finances and how to get out of that. So Kelly, would you just kind of give us a little blurb about who you are and what you do? Sure. Yeah. I just want to start with saying thank you so much, Linda, for having me today. Um, I've appreciated our friendship and um, so much since we've known each other. And uh, I'm really excited to talk this morning. Um, so I help Christians get out of debt. And specifically, I believe I was divinely called to restore hope to Christians by freeing their lives of financial stress and debt so they can break those cycles of poverty and scarcity and finally start building wealth. So, you know, when people come to us, they are almost on their last straw and they're either overwhelmed with the stress of trying to figure out how to make it all work or they, they know what they've been doing isn't working and they're ready for something else. And so a lot of people, you know, just like in the, in the health area too, you know, they, they have a lot of shame about their finances and, a lot that causes a lot of frustration and stress and anxiety and it, it can be incredibly tough to break on your own and so that's where we come in tying our faith as christians to finances and how that all works together you know to our best and highest good and really reconnecting people to the lord so that they feel like they're not alone and uh, don't have just a single option for figuring out their finances I think, thank you for sharing all that. I think it is so interesting. And I think in my past, I hadn't really realized I am Christian, um, but I don't necessarily know the Bible probably the way that you do, because I know you use those teachings in helping people navigate how they're perceiving themselves. I think that you do, but, um, but I hadn't really realized that that would be so tied together. Now I do understand that. And it's really our beliefs about everything. And, and if you're a Christian, your beliefs are a, a, come from a particular source and you have particular beliefs. And so how, how do those beliefs possibly have shown up to um, work against people in some way? Do you yeah, yeah, I'm really glad you asked that question, Linda, because it shows up all the time. We, we all have different experiences through life. And, you know, we've all, we've all experienced great things. We've all experienced tough things. And we've taken pieces of those experiences throughout our life and added them to ourselves. And so in doing that, we've created this standard of living for what's okay for us and what's not okay and how we push ourselves. And, you know, all of those experiences go into where we are right now. And when you start to hold yourself to a standard that isn't really realistic, which to be honest, most of us do that, especially women, but you know, men too. And when you start holding yourself to that standard that's unrealistic, then that's when you start to have a lot of frustration because you can't possibly meet that standard. And, and it causes a ton of stress. And then you add finances on top of it and the more financial stress you have, you know, your faith just kind of takes a dip because you feel like you're alone. You feel like God doesn't love you. You feel like, or, or you know, if you, if you work hard enough, you know, then God will reward you with all this abundance that you've been asking for, or, you know, at least you'd be able to pay your bills or, you know, so, so there's all these like beliefs that come into our mind. And so where we come in, especially is to help people really process those forgive those, forgive, and, and really forgive themselves. And that's where they start to really eliminate a lot of that stress yeah. and feel the hand of God, you know, in their financial life. Because a lot of people, 
think that their faith is in a great place, but then you look at their finances and they're in a really tough spot. And so we know that when we're in complete alignment with our beliefs that our finances line up with that. And so um, it's just really, really interesting how those things are so, so tied together. And so we feel like we've distilled so many of the teachings from the Bible into what we do that we have a, a huge focus on love and forgiveness as our as our foundation for everything. So cool, Kelly, because I do a, a lot, a lot of work in that area, forgiveness and love, which relieves stress and helps with health and success and relationships. And I'm just curious, is there, do you find with the people that you work with a common thought that um, poverty is pious or, you know, not mm -hmm. wanting money or, or wanting money or accumulating money is um, not godlike? Right. Yeah. So, so there is a, a verse in the Bible talking about, I think Jesus was talking about the ability to there, you know, when you go to heaven, you can't take any of your riches with you. It's more difficult for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven, I believe is, is what the verbiage is on that. And so many people have taken that to, you know, I'm destined to not have very much. I'm destined to struggle. I'm, I'm destined, you know, the God, that's the kind of life that God wants me to live. And we really feel like God has abundance in mind for everyone. And that comes to everyone in different ways, but especially financially, when you look at the impact that you can have when you have no debt in the picture compared to when you are in that bondage to debt, it is a huge difference for what you can do mission-wise around the world, what you can do in your local community, and really what you can do for your family. And, and it's not that we are pushing people to, to be abundant or have, you know, be really wealthy just for the sake of being wealthy. We are teaching people how to get rid of their debt so they can have this huge impact on God's world that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. And yeah. so when you change that perspective, then everything, you know, changes because um, in that, that worldview where, you know, you're prizing staying where you're at and just barely making ends meet, it, it's almost like, a, um, oh, a, a destructive behavior almost, you know, like that belief is because then you just end up drawing more and more negative things to you because you're holding that belief. And it, it's just like that cycle that keeps perpetuating yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to, um, what came to my mind when you were talking, I just want to throw this out, see what you think, but the word desire can have a negative connotation I think especially for people who really follow the Bible, right? We're not supposed to desire things. Desire has a, has a connection to lust maybe or wanting, and that's not Christianly or godlike. But if you look at the word desire means of the father, sire is father, day is the Latin word of, of the father. And that when we desire to be joyful and whole in all areas of our life, have an abundance of joy and resources to give. So it's not that we're greedy and wanting wealth, desire, but of the Father, that the Father wants for us all of those experiences while we're in this life. That's a very different way of looking at it. Do, does that really yeah. what you Yeah, do? so so it's interesting how that comes up because there are some people that are taking that, um, you know, almost poverty vow to the extreme where if they want something that's not a need, you know, they just want something, it's automatically bad. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I read somewhere one time that um, someone's interpretation of scripture was that all of our desires come from God. And I thought that was a really interesting perspective. And it speaks to what you just said specifically, mm -hmm. because um, I think there's something to be said for sure about when we have a desire, really paying attention to that and picking up the, 
the lesson or experience that God has for us in that moment, you know, because a lot of those desires expand our ability to feel, expand our ability to love. And, and some of those negative experiences too do the same thing, right? Because because we grow when we change and when we're uncomfortable. And, and then, you know, sometimes there's some, and most of the time there's some really great things that come out of all of those challenges and everything. <clears throat> so I think it's interesting that um, people add stress to their lives when they have their just desires instead of really going to the Lord and, you know, respecting that desire that was put into their heart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that um, interpretation of that, because I really, th and what you said what, that you read, desires come from God, so that would be more of, of the Father, and it's just f getting the skill to discern, is this a desire that I have to be better than someone else, or to show up someone else, or just to make my life more comfortable for myself. That's different than a desire that comes from wanting to make a difference in the world, wanting to be impactful, wanting to share and spread joy so that I have now resources to go do that. And I'm not asking for help from other people. I'm not at um, needing mercy from other people. I'm not in stress. So it's a very different way to see desires. And if I'm, I'm sure you probably work with people and helping them distinguish which, mm -hmm. where they're coming from and, and how to focus on the ones that really are of God. So, yeah. And I think too, you know, it's tough initially when you start to, to really think and analyze about that, to, to kind of discern you know, as you said, between what our what our petty human self is wanting, and and maybe what God is wanting for us, and so that's where you know we really help people to to connect to the Holy Spirit that's within them is kind of how we we talk about it and receive that guidance, and that they may never never have received that guidance before in their entire lives, and so that's pretty cool to watch. Yeah, yeah, because we can block it when we get so caught up in the stress mm -hmm. cycle and our, exactly. and our worry, we're blocking the messages that could come from Holy Spirit and from our, our intuition is that conduit of getting those messages. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. Yeah, so I just think it's really wonderful that you can look through this lens with your knowledge. And I know um, you have a strong background in finance, so you've got that piece of it right? What did you, right. right? So, um, so you've got the, the finance piece and then the Christian belief piece that together totally changes people's lives, which is so amazing to me. I think that's really cool. Um, and I'm all about what does it take for people to get out of stress? Because my background in health sees how all health conditions, all, I'm going to say every single one, cancer, autoimmune, um, whatever it is, have a source root cause, probably the biggest root cause is stress. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> and then when you're stressed, your body can't handle the things that our environment might bring it like infections, toxins from, you know, our food and chemicals and all of that. And then things just start to spiral. But the stress and those beliefs about who we are and what's possible for us are really the biggest root source cause. So that's where I dig in and you dig in there through, but around their finances, which is so important because when people, I'm sure you see in marriages, when people have financial issues going on, it's really hard to be open and loving in your marriage. You're so stressed. You're so in survival that you can't right. even team. Yeah, it's like you have that fight or flight response engaged all the time. And I'm sure you see this all the time in the people that you work with, but but there are so many triggers that happen throughout the day that you know we're in that fight or flight about finances so often that our adrenals just get maxed out so fast and it happens over and over. And eventually, you know, we figure out a way that of living, living like that. And so a lot of times when I talk to people, they have a really tough time even seeing another way to live because they have 
figured out a way to navigate this fight or flight all the time about their finances. And it's so incredibly tough you know, to break that cycle on your own if you've never done anything like that before. And you normalize it. People normalize, well, this is how life is. What what are you saying to me? This is how life is. Look around. Because a lot of people, that is their norm. And they've always lived that way or it's been passed down, especially when it's coming from beliefs like that. You've, you you know, heard what your parents said, um, you know, around money or whatever since you were little so like no this is how life is and um I'm sure but once people like can open the door of possibility and can see I can be true to my beliefs around God and being a Christian and be financially abundant I just have to get over that fear Mm -hmm. I know if you think fear is a I I think yes exactly (laughs) yeah because you're it's fearful to to look from a different place and to say there is a different way. So you have to have some strength and courage to do that and be willing or want something different bad enough. But um, yeah, so is there anything else that you would wanna say about that, about Christian beliefs, about what you do for people? And I'm gonna ask how they could reach you if they wanted to. Yeah, so I think I think the really important thing is as people are listening, you know, a lot of people feel like they, They can't do anything about their situation. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna reiterate that, um, I was speaking with another friend of mine about this last night, but we, every day we make hundreds of choices, right? We choose to take a shower. We choose to feed ourselves, to take care of our body. We choose certain foods over others based on, you know, suggestions like like what you do, Linda. And um, changing one or two little things every day or every other day and, and really implementing those things can have huge impact down the line. So first of all, it doesn't have to be hard. A lot of people have that kind of, you know, um, I don't know if I would say like drudgery, but, but the idea that, that changing your finances is hard and it's painful. <clears throat> it's like you, you have to budget everything down to the nth degree. And I would just put out there that that we are, we are choosing the life that we're living. Yeah. And yes, there are things that happen. There are good things that happen. There are bad things that happen that are out of our control. But the more that we can really be proactive in our perspective, the less stress we will experience, especially around our finances. And a friend, um, one of my favorite authors has this quote that I think about all the time. And it's... Um, if you don't like your perspective, then maybe you should change your perspective. And when your perspective changes, everything looks different. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's just so powerful because right now we're making the choice to either stay where we are or change to get where we want to be. And um, I would just encourage people to really think about that. And if they're not where they want to be, to reach out and get some help. Because, um, you know, there doesn't have to be shame about getting help. There doesn't have to be guilt about not being able to do it yourself. You know, people have studied the Bible for their entire lives and they're still finding new things about it. So, you know, it's almost unrealistic to expect that we would get everything perfect the first time around. Yeah. Um, So those are the things I just would suggest that people really kind of sit and, and think about. That's awesome. Your your quote made me think of another author that I like. Have you ever heard of Florence Scovel Shin? Oh yeah, one of my favorites. Uh huh. Because she was a hundred years ago, so in the 1920s, I think, right? Just about a hundred mm-hmm. years. Ago, a spiritual healer. She really references the Bible a lot, um, and worked with people on different issues. But I remember a story that she shares in her book called The Game of Life, and it's really about understanding that life can be a game. We, we can make it very hard, but it can be a game in that you just have to understand how it works. But she talks about how this man was on his, and in the 1920s, this was a big deal. He had his last $700 to his name. And he had come to her about, he had been working with her about abundance and about receiving, being open to receiving and whatever. And she was working with him exactly. I I think on what you teach and um, really seeing it from a different perspective. Anyway, 
$700 to his name. It was winter time and he bought a winter coat for $500. And his wife was like, are you kidding me? We only have $700 and you just bought a fur coat for yourself for 500. Mm -hmm. We have $200 left. And his response was, I love myself enough and I trust in the Lord enough to know the money is coming in and I don't want to be cold this winter. I didn't have a coat, so I'm going to spend my money on what I need to take care of myself. And I know it's going to open doors. And then she goes on to share that within a month, he came into like a huge amount of money, especially <laughs> that time. But he came into a lot of money where they had been really struggling. But it was his ability to trust that he could spend, even though he didn't have a lot, he could invest in himself. Mm -hmm. and more money. That was going to turn everything. And it did. So um, I just wanted to end with that thought because when people are really struggling, they may not think they can take what they have and invest in themselves more, but it is that exact investment that will change everything. Yep, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. such a cool book. She's a great writer. Um, also, The Power of Word, I think, is another one she has. So I'll just throw that out there and people are like, oh, I don't want to check her out, but you, you might want to check Kelly out because she's got <laughs> The financial background with what she does for a living and then helping Christians overcome their beliefs and what's been holding them back to be financially abundant and powerful in the world by having great resources to share. So Kelly, how can people reach you? Is there like a... Yeah, so we have a free Facebook group out there called Christians Unite and Prosper, and people are definitely welcome to come in and see all the, the videos that we're posting and the information that we're posting, and I'll go ahead and send you a link for that, Linda, okay. so that you can share it with the video. Um, we'd welcome everyone in there, and then they can sure reach out. There's other links in the group, too, to reach out from there. Okay, awesome. Christians Unite and Prosper. So again, this was recorded to ma match our schedules, so when I actually air this, um, which will be on Tuesday, not this afternoon, because something else is going on, but Tuesday, whatever Tuesday's date is, today's the 17th, 18, 19, 20, 20, Tuesday, March 22nd, this mm -hmm. will air, and then um, you can reach out to Kelly from there, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much for spending your early morning hours with me. <laughs> yes, thanks so much for having me, Linda. I appreciate it. I always love our conversations. So fun. It's a great way to start the day for me. All right. Have a great one. And I'm sure I'll see you again soon. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Bye.